it's it's always fun to just hit the record button and not really know what the hell is going on like like <laughs> topic wise <laughs> yeah 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 like to- topic wise and just like you know life <laughs> just just completely jumping in cold yeah well uh i mean let's see we were talking about uh uh complaining about our lives really i think um <laughs> <laughs> the changes our lives have undergone since leaving our humble hometown becoming uh, so what, what what was it? Uh, just like sand through the hourglass or the days of our lives? Something like that. <laughs> Good Bill and Ted quote. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I think uh, when we started the podcast, we were trying to um, kind of examine what it was like being uh, uh, parents of young kids and, and traveling and playing games and all this stuff. And so I think um, we're just kind of maybe a little bit uh, overdue to just revisit that topic a little bit. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean I, I i know one of our yeah like the whole idea is we're vagabonds we move around i i know we've got a low priority on our discussion list living in america as foreigners yeah uh, uh <laughs> well you know it's but, funny but, I, but I, we've got even more than just america though like got a few yeah. countries under our belts i think yeah. the, the american topic is interesting just because it gets easier like it's weird it's it's uh, like, like anything i mean if you go to probably some country or new city, like that first year or something is going to be different than after you've lived there for whatever, right? Uh, six years or something. I mean, we've been in the States now for like seven years. No. Yeah. Yeah. Seven years. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a good chunk of time. <laughs> that is a good chunk of time. That is a very good chunk of time. Yeah. We've, uh, it's 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 weird uh, thinking about all that. I mean, I've I've moved around even when I was a kid. Like uh, I was born in one province, and then by the time I was four, we moved to Nova Scotia. And then by the time I was eleven, I think we moved to a different town in Nova Scotia. So <laughs> I, I've, I've... <laughs> Nova Scotia to me is like one big forest kind of, and so it's like I was near this this kind of opening in this lake, and now I'm near this other lake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. I, I mean, it was actually like that for me. Like I, where I grew up in uh, in Amherst, uh, all the way in Cumberland County, uh, I, I had a forest literally beside <laughs> me. Like we would have bears go through our yard and stuff. Wow. Yeah. My uh, my. My dad is from a fishing village of like, I forget, 600 people or 700 people or something. Nice. I mean, <laughs> like some people are from basically literally the woods, right? Like I know people yeah, who, yeah. I, I have, uh, I've worked with people who are from like Arkansas and like right. literally it's just like in the movies where like, it's like the cornfield with the house and the neighbors are two miles away, like that kind of thing. So I've, yeah. never, I've never been that rural, but um, uh, we lived in uh, Pictou County yeah. in my extreme I, I, youth. I lived in. Uh, wait, is it Pictou County? Is it, is is that where New Glasgow is? Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know my Nova Scotia. <laughs> Maybe New Glasgow, Pictou County. I think so. You lived in New Glasgow. Well, yeah, my parents moved there after high school. So, uh, yeah, New Glasgow is a town in Pictou County in the province of Nova Scotia. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in in high school, I used to work at a music store in the Truro Mall. Uh, <laughs> And then I went to college and then my parents moved and then I was kind of counting on having a Christmas employment at that same CD store. So I, uh, I came and crashed in your basement for a few nights during the <laughs> Christmas rush so that I could uh, earn a little bit of income before I went and stayed with my parents in New Glasgow. Is that when you had that van that caught on fire? Uh, no, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a, it was a, <laughs> it was a different van. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that van that caught on fire. That was older than me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember you could. T- it looked like, you know, um, I, maybe I'm remembering wrong. It reminded me anyway of the start of the first Ninja Turtles movie, where there's that crime wave and they're loading televisions into the into the back of the van. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, I don't. I don't think it was. I, I'd have to watch that movie again. Uh, I mean, I'd have to watch it again, regardless, because it's an amazing yes. movie. Yes. But <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't quite remember the specific van. No, it was, it was just a, a standard 1983 minivan. It was red. And it was, it was, it was. Uh, its exterior was in good shape, but uh, it had no air conditioning. It had crank windows. Yeah, uh, man. 
you know, it, it didn't have GPS. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird because, like, I don't know. I'm not even a car person at all, but old cars, like, there's some old cars that I think are kind of, like, they look kind of cool. Like, I mean, if I was to write a comic or something, maybe the character would drive this awesome, like, 80s, like, whatever car. But, like, when you mm-hmm. see, like, even, like, cliche, lame example, but the DeLorean, like, if you've ever seen one in real yeah. life and you look inside it, oh, man, it reminds me of, like, seeing those old, like, like during the space race when you can see, like, the insides of the Russian, like, Soyuz rocket stuff. It's just so, like, different era. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, I guess I, I'll, I'll pose the question. Mm-hmm. Life is obviously more complicated having left our hometowns. What, is there anything you miss? Like, if you could call out anything, is there anything you would say you miss? I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I was, I was giving that dramatic pause mostly for humor. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite get the laugh out of the audience that it was expecting. yeah uh, <laughs> see i i was uh i was i i queued up lots of time to think i i knew okay. it would be a... yeah, yeah, yeah no um i mean it, it it's weird as a parent um because you know when when i grew up out in the middle of nowhere with the forest next to me and bears uh I, my parents just let me roam free maybe hoping the bears would get me yeah. i don't know <laughs> um, uh so it was it was definitely weird having or, I mean, it was definitely nice as a kid having, like, all this open space and I could just roam free. Um, I could just, you know, by the time I was in grade four, so, I don't know, uh, that was nine, uh, 10 years old, I was biking three kilometers to get to school. Wow. Um, and, and I feel like I can't imagine that for my kid living yeah. in the city. Yeah. It's, uh, that's um, <laughs> like, a tough like, one to swallow. Like when I was four, I was roaming around in my backyard, swinging sticks at mud puddles and stuff. And my kid just doesn't have that opportunity. Like yeah. he's, we don't have a backyard where I where I live, and I'm not going to let him wander down the street to get to the park by himself, right? Yeah. Like like I would be arrested if I did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so I think like that's the biggest thing I miss is just that that freedom that I had, um, in in that area. Um, Interesting. Because I think that's, I that's really like a, a anywhere thing or not like an anywhere thing, but like any kind of maybe smaller town or whatever yeah. would have that characteristic. I mean, there there was, a, there's lots of things about the time period. Yeah. Like that, it, that I think are different. The time period and even like the era of your life. Like it's really hard to compare being 30 something somewhere to being 15 <laughs> somewhere, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I, and I mean, that's that's even different just between like my twenties and my thirties. Yeah, uh, like I, I can I can very easily look back with nostalgia at a whole bunch of stuff and and like wish things were like that. But it was also just like such a different time period that like it's impossible to go back to. Yep. Um, I don't know. Like the the, the the there was a convenience store across the street from where I lived, basically, and you know everyone has convenience stores across the street today. Yeah, right. but as a um, 10 year old i could go into this shop by myself with like the, a couple of quarters <laughs> that i'd stolen from my dad's uh, closet <laughs> and i could buy myself a little bag of candy <laughs> with with 50 cents right yeah um, and and like my kid does i, I don't have any money <laughs> like, like wait he, what <laughs> like he would have to steal my credit card oh, yeah. if he were to do the same thing right yeah uh so that's like not even an option for him <laughs> to do that even if he were to sneak out of the house how many people do still carry cash like i have not carried cash in like 10 years it's it's pretty rare i've i've gone out of my way and gotten him some cash for for uh, i don't know trying to keep that that tooth fairy tradition alive like he, he loses a tooth and i give him a, a loony a nice shiny golden <laughs> loony nice our kid keeps uh swallowing the lost teeth and so uh, <laughs> we've we've tried it we've been like you know if you save it we could do this thing and it's kind of like i don't know not working out <laughs> I, I guess that's not normal like i freaked out like crazy the first time i mean swallowing a tooth look at those things they're sharp and like yeah i, I we we read about it and apparently it's really normal and yeah, she was fine both times. So. You know, I what I freaked out about um, was when my kid was uh, practically a newborn and breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they 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 have no control over their 
bodies at all. So, <laughs> so uh, he went from breastfeeding to uh, burping up, if you will, aka vomiting. Uh-huh. Um, and I've there's like these big globs of blood in his vomit and I was just blood like, Are you yeah serious? yeah well i mean i'm glad you're having the same reaction because <sighs> that was basically my reaction i was like oh my god what what is happening here he's he's bleeding from the inside we got to get him to the hospital um so you know we lived uh, we didn't own a car or anything so of course we're not going to go to the hospital mm-hmm. but but we uh, <laughs> we we called the hotline uh <laughs> Uh-huh. And the nurse. <laughs> I don't think they call those hotlines, do they? Maybe they do. I don't know. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the the twenty four hours. Yeah, there's like a, there's, yeah, there's like a nurse hotline or something. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's not a sex thing. It's like <laughs> a. <laughs> uh, but no, you you. Uh, I was able to call up and uh, tell them. You know, my my kid's coughing up blood, and they're like, "Okay, did he just breastfeed?" I'm like, "Yes, yeah, that's normal." Um, I guess when they when they get bad latches, they, you know, the breast milk is made from blood. Um, so uh, I was, I didn't want to, <laughs> I was going to guess, yeah, maybe he's biting. Yeah. Something. Yeah. So yeah, he, he had a, a quote unquote bad latch. I see. Um, and yeah, so he, he drank a little bit of blood and then, uh, I guess he's not a vampire, coughed mm. it back up spit and, it up. Uh, spit it up. Uh, I don't remember how I started this story. But... <laughs> <laughs> It's too early. I don't either. But, but great little anecdote, and thank you yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I honestly have no idea how how that memory sparked. But but yeah, that, that was that was a, a a panic moment for me. I guess with him as a kid. Uh, yeah, I would also probably panic. I mean, I panic quite easily. <laughs> so anything? oh, I guess I guess we were talking about your kid eating teeth. Ah, uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and that's the panic incurred from that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, so ingested uh, related to parental scares yes 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 um you reminded me this is also kind of an unrelated anecdote i won't read it in detail but when we were in uh we had been in a car accident um you probably recall i think it was yep. two or so years ago and when it happened like everybody was okay but my son bit his tongue really bad mm. of course you don't know that in the moment right and so when the accident happened i mean he was two or something and like he's bleeding from the mouth like i was terror panicked like i I don't think i've ever panicked like that before it just like Mm. messed me up and then of course the hospital you can see this very large gash in his tongue and it healed fine everything's totally fine now but like that like blood any any blood thing is just terrifying to me so yeah (laughs) i can i can relate yeah i mean if we want to deviate into the topic of uh us injuring our children (laughs) Uh, I can, uh, boy, do I have stories. Not really. Injuring your children. Well, my children in, injure each other is usually what happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which f- constantly frustrates me because I have no idea how to stop it. <laughs> like they'll get yeah. in a fight and take a swipe at each other and put like a scar on the other one's face. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, go ahead. I was just going to, no, I was interrupting. Go ahead. Just I was just going to say, it's like, in retrospect, it's like, it's easy now to say, oh, well, we should have clip their nails every single day or something yeah, yeah. but but you know you you kind of don't for maybe a few days and they get a little bit long and boom scar in the face and i'm just yeah, yeah. so like ah. yeah yeah I've, I've become much more um um what's what's the word um uh blase uh, about it uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, where you know i i'm i, I go from calling nurses about uh him spitting up blood to now basically whenever he bumps into something and injures himself i'm like yeah i told you not to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah kids have a, a strong ability to walk forward without looking forward yeah. from what i've seen but yeah i mean uh, going going back to the topic of uh the nova scotia and whether there's things that i miss I, I think it's largely just like that that time period in my life where uh simultaneously uh, everything seemed like it was the most important thing that could <laughs> be happening to me AKA uh, high school I guess. yeah yeah and and the reality that like nothing mattered <laughs> and i i was able to have so much spare time back then like i yeah, yep. the amount of times i beat final fantasy 7 just cuz i had nothing better to do <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah man i remember like we would have a summer and it would be like 90 days of just like no schedule you wake up in the morning decide what to do hang out with friends go to the cool basement to play games like yeah whatever and then go to sleep like at the time it's weird because i guess I'm, I'm sure everyone on planet earth is like this but like i had no idea how valuable that was how like yeah you know just how i would never have that again and how someday i would look at that and be like wow <laughs> like yeah. it's hard to say i would have acted differently i think i was so hyper focused on 
all the things that dumb high school kids are hyper focused on, you know, being being popular or like, you know, hanging out yeah. with your friends and stuff. But those those times when I was just alone whatever like playing games or just screwing around i probably wasted a lot of time you know i, I was just gonna say you know what i miss about nova scotia yeah is like and i don't mean this in an insulting way to nova scotia <laughs> people really but like it's kind the of the simplicity of it all yeah really though like it's a it's a pointless place i mean there's lots of pointless places this is not a not a uh, a dig on nova scotia but like yeah. this is dumb and it shows how dumb i my how my mind worked back then but i remember like when the when the terrorist attacks happened in, in mm. new york city I remember thinking, wow, I'm lucky I live somewhere that no one cares about. <laughs> but really, yeah. like, I mean, I, I guess it's kind of changing now with like uh, people from like I was hearing people from Ontario are buying property there and properties jumping yeah. and stuff. But growing up, like no one cared about Nova Scotia or knew what it was or where it was. Houses were cheap. You could just chill. There's not any weird like it would never be targeted in a terror attack or something. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's not going to change even <laughs> really. Right? It's, 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 it's kind of like a a point of pride i guess for me in that same sense like i mean imagine you're the hipster who you know you get into a new band that no one's ever heard of and they're like oh yeah what kind of music do you like i'm like oh you know you wouldn't know uh (laughs) it's 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 it's, it's, in in a way it's kind of the same thing for me with nova scotia it's like whenever any like i've I've had the opportunity of uh, traveling around the world and you know having job interviews in, in various countries and stuff and they're always like so so tell me about yourself and you're like uh, well, I grew up uh, in in a small town on the the eastern side of Canada, because it's like if I if I bother to tell them the specific town or even the province, they haven't heard of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 kind of neat to I guess have that in my uh, biography, like it like it, it feels kind of neat to come from a, a smaller place that not too many people are aware of. Like, I don't know. It, it feels more unique than if I was like, oh, yeah, I'm from Toronto. I've lived in Toronto. <laughs> it's like I, everyone's going to know about Toronto, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I used to think that way. I found people are kind of... <laughs> I guess I've met enough other people from small towns, and I don't mm-hmm. care. <laughs> so yeah. I, just, I imagine they must be like, oh, you're from someplace, whatever. Um, yeah. Or I meet a, a lot of people who... I guess there's a lot of people from like New York and Boston. And so they know. They're just like, oh, wow. I've never met anyone from there anyway yeah and so i don't know i i kind of moved moved on from that attitude a little bit but it's neat yeah, I, guess. Yeah. I mean you, you almost never meet someone from there except when i joined uh my current company i had someone i, I one of the first people i met was from newfoundland which was like yeah. what <laughs> um but yeah uh i guess just like this like it, you know what you're getting into like that's kind of yeah. a bad thing and a good thing in a way right i mean if that's what you seek that's what you seek but like i guess it, it just the feeling of like it's never going to really change, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I mean is is kind of bullshit because it has changed. I think I haven't actually been back in a long time, but um, it just it just felt calm and like a very controlled life to stay there if I had wanted to stay there. And so I imagine anyone who lives in kind of a smaller town um, could feel that way and, and want to stay in their small town because it's like a life they can very easily imagine. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Placid, placid. Yes, having uh, yeah, it's it's kind of reassuring to li- to live in a small place where there's no earthquake risks and tornado risks and. That was the other one for, for I think particularly something you can't say about all small towns. Like I think Nova Scotia is uniquely. Um, it, it just feels like one of the least uh, environmentally threatened places, I guess. Mm-hmm. Which might not even be true. I don't know, but you have the entire pacific coast anywhere in the world being this enormous earthquake risk zone you have like looking at north america tornadoes everywhere um you know the the uh what they expect global warming is going to do to all the coastlines and stuff yeah. um what they expect global warming is going to do to places like texas and the southern united states with droughts and stuff it just feels like nova scotia is just like just chilling just fine right yeah so i mean if you combine that with this feeling of like it's so unimportant. No one's going to do a terrorist attack there, mm. which I, again I, is probably not true, really. But you you think that when you're a 17 year old going there, it just feels like a place to run away to and just chill. And it's kind of yeah. neat, I guess, where like my parents live there, and I still have some friends and stuff there. Like I couldn't conceive of it in a million years, honestly. But mm-hmm. I have that in my back pocket if I ever wanted to kind of just move back there and resume my life. Yeah. Right. And so just to have that back pocket 
uh, uh, like option feels really, I guess, reassuring in some weird way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. I, I never know what to think about that. Um, like I'm, I'm constantly questioning whether or not I should buy a house or not. Uh, and then it's always just like, if I am going to buy a house, like, you know, buying a house in the middle of Vancouver or Toronto is just, it feels insane. To well, me. It is insane. <laughs> like, like I, I don't understand how anyone can justify spending like half a million dollars. Um, and, and, and that's not even like, that that's not the price like in vancouver it's you're you're spending at least a million right it's at least a million at least like 1.5 um what it's it's interesting because you have this kind of pseudo guidance floating around that you're supposed to buy a house that is yeah. i forget exactly the number is ridiculously low but it's like three to five times your income yeah which you know good luck chuck yeah and it's weird because like you look at the rest of the world, like you look at Europe, you look at Asia, and everywhere it's like expensive. It's so expensive. It's so crowded, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like if you were to buy in like London or like whatever, right? Even like I'm sure if you were to buy in um, cities that don't get a reputation for being expensive, like uh, mm. Warsaw or something, it's not like internationally known as being expensive. But to a Polish person earning a Polish salary, living in Warsaw, it's probably well beyond three to five times salary, right? Like mm -hmm. I feel like that was almost maybe a uniquely uh, North American thing. Maybe I don't know, but what I think I've I've I find is kind of weird is like having been to Asia, having been to like London at least. I don't know about the rest of Europe, but like I feel like the homes are designed for that. Like they people, I mean, we know space is expensive, so you get this from a North American point of view, like tiny four bedroom house. It's four mm -hmm. bedrooms, but like for North Americans, it would be like wow, this is really cramped. But I mean you've designed a four bedroom house that fits on this small plot. And so a family can afford it. Whereas like yeah. in North America, there doesn't seem to be any such, um, I guess like push to do that. Like people will still build their giant houses, especially like the way zoning works. Everything has like mm -hmm. a big lawn attached to it. And so I feel like if you think about it, if you think of like the fact that a lot of what drives the prices up is the, is the land, right. It's not even the house. Mm -hmm. Look at all those lawns. Look at all those like houses that are just kind of like, separated by this large area between them and it's like if they zone better they could fit you know many more houses which could bring the prices down but north americans don't want to give up that that car lawn lifestyle right yeah yeah, yeah I've, mean, I've, I've never understood the, the lawn lifestyle yeah it's not for me it, you can you can say well there's different houses like there's there's kind of in the city houses and, and condos and stuff but i feel like it, it all kind of i mean people who can't afford the the houses with the lawns go and buy those houses that kind of have less lawn and it's like a trickle down effect kind of right so like i don't know i, I kind of don't know what i'm talking about of course there's probably <laughs> some economists who could who could say oh blah blah, blah. but it, i don't know it's just i remember so many times when we were interested in buying be it a condo or a house like i would have been happy with say maybe like 1200 square feet designed really well and divided up really well so that it's like four bedrooms mm -hmm. maybe small rooms but that doesn't exist. If you want four bedrooms, it's going to be this 2,000 square feet, $2 million house. That's it. Mm. Right? That was my experience searching for homes. And so, I don't know, back to Nova Scotia, like a four bedroom house is like, I don't know what it costs nowadays, but if you have two working people, I'm pretty sure you could actually fairly easily find a place you like within that three to five times income ban. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know the exact dollars i'm just making out uh, making it up but i i imagine that like the average income in nova scotia is going to be something like fifty thousand yeah. dollars whereas the average income in vancouver is going to be something like seventy thousand yeah. dollars yeah like it's not a, a drastic drastic difference but the then like the, scale, the, yeah. the cost of houses would be like two hundred and fifty thousand in yeah. nova scotia versus like 1.3 million <laughs> yeah in vancouver it's like yeah it's 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 a sad thing to to see like we're, Canada's in a real big housing bubble at the moment like there's articles being published every day about like Ontario's at risk of huge brain drain because more than half of youth want to leave because they can't afford a house and, and well that um, was that it's, was it's, sorry go ahead go ahead it's it's just bananas seeing like how like Vancouver and Toronto have just been like on these runaway uh, trajectories that are unsustainable yeah. and so as a result people are leaving and they're going to you know alberta uh 
and and Nova Scotia and stuff. And then the the local economy there is kind of the same way. Like you've got the big money coming from out of province, and now the locals can't buy there, and so they're looking for the even smaller communities to buy in and stuff. And it's a... I wonder if that's. I feel like this is another case of maybe like it's it's painful for the consumer, but I wonder if there's kind of like some sort of good effect there. Like knowing you and I and our personality, we're of course. I think maybe you have a little more like nature love than me, but I'm I'm definitely like a city person. Like I would not live in a, a very small place. But I think if you look at like population dynamics and stuff, um, there's like benefits to having the population kind of more spread out. So the idea of people like leaving cities and going to these smaller areas. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean that that's one thing that's actually really frustrating for me is because I working in film and games. It's like all the big studios are in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver. Like there's there's some stuff in the smaller places like there are some studios in Halifax and Ottawa mm-hmm. uh, but like they concentrate all the jobs in the cities that have yeah. the expensive cost of living and to me it's like why <laughs> why is it why is a game studio in Vancouver when yep. it it could be in Winnipeg yeah like there's yep. there's no resources other than people required for the studio and if you're like importing everyone in from other countries and stuff anyway like why are you choosing to house yourself in the most expensive part of the country yeah it sucks it's probably i mean i'm sure they're doing it because it works for them right like imagine you're a studio in vancouver recruiting versus a studio in yeah winnipeg i mean no it's, it's, no it's hard. Winnipeg. yeah but i imagine there's probably more people in vancouver so more, it's hard. Yeah. Like, like, that, like that's the reason why uh, Bioware had ended up putting a studio in in Montreal is because you know there's lots of tax subsidies and there's a population there. There's there's a big gaming community here. I don't know which came first, uh, the the studio or the community, but um, they had a studio and and continue to have one in Edmonton, and it, it's it's really hard to attract anyone to Edmonton because that's the or was the only studio there like if you have a layoff or anything you have no choice but to move whereas in montreal you know if if you get laid off there's a bunch of other places you could go to without having to move yeah yeah. so so there's there's definitely reason uh as an employee to choose these big uh, centers where there's lots of other stuff but uh, you know i don't get why you can't have a, a bunch of companies opening up in in a smaller place and do you think it's going to get better in the in the post uh, uh, COVID times where um, remote is more acceptable? I mean, speaking from the tech industry, most tech companies now are like, "Yeah, do remote." It's it's you know we'll we'll work with you and figure that out. Um, and it seems like in the tech industry anyway, a lot of these problems will start to get a lot better because you could just move to Winnipeg or yeah. whatever a cottage somewhere in the middle of nowhere. It I I don't know how it's going to work. Um... It seems interesting because increasingly people are able to work remotely, and mm-hmm. and I've seen anecdotally uh, evidence that people are uh, uninterested in returning back to the office and are quitting their jobs now that companies are asking them to come back yep. and and accepting the opportunities that are remote. Um, so yep. so I don't know. I'm I'm sure the the reverse is going to be true, where people who were had their had their dream of going to to california or whatever now that uh, blizzard is desperately needing people they're going to be filling those gaps of the people that are quitting yeah so so i feel like a lot of the companies who want to maintain a physical presence are are still going to be able to i don't i don't think there's a shortage of employees out there but i think it's interesting that there are now opportunities where people will be able to you know have their large property in nova scotia and if it, if they can manage to get any broadband internet to, <laughs> to work remotely. My parents have like a, a cottage in, um, I'm going to name drop places here, uh, Tatamagush, Nova Scotia. There we go. And they get internet, if you call it that. Uh, it's like the worst <laughs> thing ever. And so like anytime I'm trying to, I don't know, do a, a video call with them or something, I'm just like, man, <laughs> I'm glad I don't live in this kind of place personally. Um, yeah. yeah, you reminded me of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of forgetting the name. I think it's McLean's. Does that sound right? McLean's or McCain's French fries? Oh yeah, yeah, McCain's. McCain's, yeah. I mean, they're actually not think... not just French fries, but the deep and delicious cakes. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> man. My friends and I would used to go to the store and buy one each and then sit down and eat them. 
<laughs> I mean, I, d- I did that in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> we would sit in front of the convenience store with forks and eat it. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't know what these are, you should look them up. McCain, deep and delicious cake. Man. <laughs> it's like the size of a, a Super Nintendo, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Those are so good. I you, If you look up statistics about this company, they're like one of the biggest i think they make they're the biggest french fry supplier across north america or something like they have a bunch of like like top share across their industry yeah and if you i remember reading an article a while back because this company is headquartered in this tiny town in mm-hmm. new brunswick canada yeah and they were talking about how hard it was to recruit people now mm-hmm. and like no one no one would would relocate to this place to work there and it's interesting because i think that's like it kind of uh, speaks to your point where like say if you were a game company maybe the founders and some small group of people would be like excited to finally have an opportunity to be employed making games in this small area so they would found their company in this small area but like mm-hmm. i think in the long run it's going to be really hard to scale and uh that's why you get these people yeah. who just go straight to vancouver or straight to whatever uh you know los angeles or something it's crazy to me though too because like i mean uh, you know, like when I think of, say, New York, there's like all these financial jobs. and Those people make like half a million a year and stuff. And it's kind of like it, it matches, I guess, like the reality of living in New York and how expensive it is. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, I think games are a really good job, but they're not necessarily like financial industry make half a million a year jobs. Right. And so to yeah. exclusively locate these in the expensive cities is not and even like even like tech jobs are famously I mean, you, there's they run the gamut you can work in tech for 40k a year or for a million a year but like the fact that they cluster so incredibly in like san francisco mm-hmm. <laughs> like i remember being able to be employed in seattle when i first started felt like i was just so lucky like seattle has expanded its presence significantly in tech uh even over the last decade i guess um it used to really just be microsoft and amazon mm-hmm. um which are two big companies but coming with that is the the it's it's more like san francisco now i mean a house is a million dollars absolutely mm-hmm. no question million dollars boom um unless you want to drive two hours and it's it's i don't know i, I guess it's just it's just life <laughs> it does yeah. suck um yeah yeah so i mean i mean yeah that's that's the the biggest difference i guess as a, as an adult and, and missing the place is just like the simplicity of the times of not even needing to worry about that like i'm sure there were people in the 80s and 90s who were struggling to make ends meet and you know it's it's easy to just ignore that because as a kid it just wasn't a concern for me right yeah Uh, yeah i think uh it is different too though not just like we were kids so we didn't know but like um people do increasingly congregate in cities right Mm mm-hmm And so you can look at the entire population, especially the younger population and the population that wants to, say, buy houses and and, Mm -hmm. make a living and blah, blah, blah. And a larger, a very much larger proportion of those people are in cities competing for less land. Plus, the cities are bigger than they used to be, right? Like, like, I'm sure if you went and polled the entire population and said, what's the population of the city you live in? That number has risen steadily over time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, you're competing with those people for land and so forth. And then you have, like, I don't know, the... I think more immigration and more people who can more easily move from place to place, like not even like, like internal immigration as well. Right. Yeah. But like, it's just so easy to like in the age of the internet, just find a job in some city you want to find a job in and then just like make that figure out how to make that work or something. Right. Yeah, um, I, can't, I can't imagine how anything used to be the, done before the internet in the seventies. I think there's probably a lot more people who would just stay in their hometown. Right. Or you like yeah. answer a, uh, I guess you would get like a, a catalog of different companies and send them like applications in the mail and hope you get a paper application back. I, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, one thing I was, uh, a point I wanted to make before I forgot was, I guess going back to the Nova, Nova Scotia thing one more time. One thing I always keep in mind is like, and I think you've thought of this too, but like my, my kids, like I find yeah. it really weird. Like, let's say I made it work in one of these really expensive places. So like we live in Seattle. Let's say I get this awesome tech job for, half a million a year or something mm-hmm. and so now i can afford these these crazy houses okay awesome but it's very likely when my kids grow up they're not gonna be able to afford it right i mean maybe they could go into tech and get the same jobs and live with me till they're 30 and maybe that's wonderful but for the most case i'm forcing them to move i don't know if i'm thinking about this in a weird way right like like 
by raising them in the city, I think there's a lot of benefits and I'm yeah. opening them to a lot of opportunities. So I don't think I'm, I'm doing something bad to them. But I guess it's just very different because if you lived in Nova Scotia and you wanted this tight net family thing or whatever, you know, your kids could grow up and like buy the house beside you with no big deal, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's just kind of a weird thing. Like I, I just I feel bad for them because I don't see this ever going away. I see I mean, it getting worse. I mean, I it, it it it's either way, right? Like you you. I think you're coming at it from the traditional perspective where you buy a home and you live in it and then your kids move out, which hasn't been standard for a lot of countries for a while. And I, I remember when I went to school in Ontario, there, there was a family um, that, that were friends of my grandparents and, you know, they're the adult children in their thirties were still living at home. And to me, this was just unfathomable. <laughs> um but you know, now that I'm an adult and I'm seeing this increasing bubble, like it, it makes sense, right? Like, and I and I kind of won't be surprised if by the time my kid's thirty, he doesn't really have a choice but to live with us. Like, it, like <laughs> certainly, it's it's getting to that point now where like the the people that are buying houses have money from their parents, and if you want to save money, like why are you paying rent and stuff? So, but but I mean, as to your point of like you're thinking that your kid might not be able to stay in the city and they'll have to go away as a result of you living there. It's like, I mean, that was true for my parents. Like they raised me in Nova Scotia primarily and they still live in the Atlantic provinces and I don't like <laughs> my, my personal interests um, could not be fulfilled staying in, in, in Truro. Yeah. So, so I moved and and i've been in cities ever since and not even just one city like even if they just stayed in toronto maybe the same thing would have happened where i would have had to move around to other places right yeah so i, I think that's that's always going to depend on an individual level of, of what the people want i think i think that's what's kind of sad right now about the, the generation of people who are living in vancouver and don't necessarily want to have uh you know, a specific dream job or something. They just want to live and, and hang out with their, their friends and family the same way we're talking about, the, the, the peaceful way of life that you, you are able to have in Nova <laughs> Scotia. Maybe they want to do that in Vancouver, and, and they just can't. That like, is what I'm talking about right there. It's less about um, expectations or, like, my, my kids are pathetic because they're still at home or something like yeah. that. It's more about not having that place to run away to, I guess, because maybe I'm, I'm seeing it too heavily from my perspective, but, like, with the Nova Scotia kind of back pocket place to run away from by raising them in an expensive city. They just don't, they just don't get that, I guess. And like yeah. to your point, exactly. Like what if they just want to chill in their hometown? I mean, I don't think like this attitude I have, I guess comes from having met a lot of people in Vancouver and Seattle yeah. who are not in tech. They're not in some high paying job and they're, they just feel unsettled by the fact that in their own lifetime, mm -hmm. um, their city became a boom town and now they're forced out and they they have friends who can stay here, but they can't, or, or they, they're struggling or they're thinking of leaving. I mean, it's not, it's a thing. It's just, it is how it is, but it's just kind of, it, it is, I guess, back of mind for me somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I remember when I first moved to Toronto from college uh, or for college, finding mm -hmm. it really weird. Like just the, the overall atmosphere seemed very different where like people were much more serious and, and geared towards careers and, I don't know, maybe I kind of just chalk, I don't know the, the phrase chopped, chalked, mm. chalked it up. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just kind of uh, assumed that was like a Toronto thing. And I think compared to other cities that I've lived in, it, it is, but I don't know, maybe that is also just a, the case of Toronto was the first part of Canada that was really experiencing that bubble of mm. like, you need to focus on a job if you ever plan on, on staying here. Yeah. Um, it's probably also a mix of like, I mean, you were probably hanging out with other people in your age group. So people who were 18, 19, 20, um, many of which moved to Toronto for some reason. So they obviously had yeah. a goal in even being there. Like, I feel like hanging out with 20 year olds in Truro, mm. probably they have different career aspirations than someone who's willing to uplift and go to, you know, Toronto and pay all that money and stuff. Yeah. Maybe there's a stereotype lurking in there I'm, I'm feeding into. I don't know, but yeah. Well, I, I I think it is largely just the the case of like the people in in smaller towns. I imagine tend to just 
try to live moment to moment a little bit more and, and enjoy themselves. Whereas, I don't know, I feel like part of the draw to, to, to being in the cities is the access to everything. Like you're always like, I want to go shopping or I want to go see the, the movie or the the art g- exhibit or, or whatever. Like there's, there's always a sense of there's something to do. I guess I have no comprehension of maybe like what it is like to grow up in a city. Yeah. Obviously having grown up in the small town, like we're that classic case of raised in the small town and then leave and go to the city kind of thing. But yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. It's, I find like, I guess I, I, I don't know what your experience is. I just feel like when I'm in a city, there's a lot of people from that city and there's a lot of people from other usually smaller, mm-hmm. less boom places, but you don't really get, I mean, there's kind of patterns of people, but you don't really get like a lot of people from other cities per se. Yeah. I don't know if that's really true. Like I remember in Vancouver, I meet a lot of people from Vancouver or a lot of people from totally wherever, but I didn't really meet a lot of Montreal people or a lot of Toronto people. You think yeah. that, like, yeah, Canadians moving to Vancouver, like, just looking at proportions, there would be more people from, say, Toronto if it was just clear, like, straight, yeah, um, you know, averaged across the whole country. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, for for me, because my job was attracting a lot of foreign people into the city, mm-hmm. like in film. Um, I think there was maybe nine of us on the effects team. I'm just, uh, I think I think there was close to nine of us, and I was the only Canadian. Really? Uh, um, you should go work in the tech industry. I've been on teams <laughs> that are like all Canadians. Like it's mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so it was weird for me in Vancouver because I felt like I met almost no one from Vancouver. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, like everyone that I would spend time with was an expat from somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I think that was always the thing in Toronto too where like a lot of people who were born in Toronto never went up the CN Tower. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'll, like, t- I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. My yeah. grandmother lives in St. Catharines, Ontario. Mm-hmm. And she's lived in St. Catharines, Ontario since she was, I think, 19 or something. Mm-hmm. And she's like 90 now. Do you know where St. Catharines, Ontario is? Oh, I do. Oh, you I mean, do. I... <laughs> she basically, I... yeah. She, she... Sorry, go. Oh, go ahead. I, was, I was just going to say, I'm sure half our audience knows. <laughs> or, yeah. uh-huh. or, or probably 100% of our audience. <laughs> Uh, um, I was going to say, she lives like on the border of St. Catharines and Niagara Falls, yeah, yeah. which is like the town or the city of Niagara Falls or whatever. And then that straddles, there's like a Niagara Falls, New York. Yeah. Basically, she lives in Niagara Falls, basically. Yeah. Like just barely not living in Ni- Niagara Falls. She went to see Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls for the first time. Like it was probably 10 years ago now, but I couldn't believe it. She lived in the city, basically in the city of Niagara Falls for like 70 years and yeah. never went to see Niagara Falls. Yeah. I couldn't, like, I always felt like you would, like, like just happen to drive past it or something. <laughs> like, it's crazy, right? So um, I totally get that. I totally get that. I mean, I've never gone up the Space Needle. I've never had any interest in doing so. But most of the people who have come to visit us, like, the first day they're here, they go up the Space Needle. Have, have you have you been to Victoria Park in Toronto? Never. Not once, ever. <laughs> never. I absolutely have not, if that's a real question. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. I haven't. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I that's, so I mean, that, that's, that's the Niagara point, Falls. Right? That's the Niagara Falls example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty common. So I mean, it's it's. I I feel like there's a lot of people who do just want to live their life. Like as far as my kid goes, like it's it's hard for me, man. Like I've got a full time job. My wife's got a full time job. Um, I, I'm a, a bit of a workaholic. So so I had done like some freelance stuff on top of my job. So I haven't. I, I don't own a car. Mm-hmm. I, you know, there's a pandemic going on now, so at least that explains almost half the time that I've been living in Montreal, but mm-hmm. I haven't seen a tremendous amount of Montreal. Yeah. So with my kid, like his life is basically um, hanging out at home uh, and playing video games and building Lego and, and stuff like that with me. And then we'll take sounds him. Kinda, sounds kind of great, actually. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but like I'll take him within maybe a kilometer and a half radius we we rarely leave that Mm -hmm. um like we'll we'll walk to there's two amazing bagel shops near where i live that that are like that's what people come for for tourism to montreal um oh wow so so like we we get food 
locally just walking there and there's a few different parks locally that we can just walk to and, and play there and there's not a whole lot else it's like every now and then we'll make like a special trip to the mall where <laughs> you know we might get a, some some chocolates or, or some bath bombs or something um, but we haven't done a whole lot of touristy stuff here and so he's probably going to fill into the, fall into that same routine of a, of a local where he, he hasn't seen the tourist attractions. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it's funny. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I totally can relate. Of course, I don't know that I've really done any touristy stuff in any place I live. I'm just not really into that, I guess. Mm. Um, I liked it to an extent in Vancouver. Um, I don't know what sort of touristy stuff really was there, but I, I, I would go out on hikes. Like uh, mm. you, you came out, you and yeah. Kia came out once with uh, me and Andrea to, uh, I can't remember what it's called, uh, Lynn Valley. <laughs> I don't remember any. <laughs> but yeah, I remember going out. I don't remember there's any. Sus- Lynn, Lynn, yeah, Lynn Valley. Like there's a suspension bridge and there's like all these yeah. rocks next to a, a, a lake like there's yep. or river. There's, there's not really anything there to do. It's just nice. There's, there's a lot of nature in Vancouver area to, to get out. That's kind of the draw of being there more so yeah. than going up the Space Needle. Yep, definitely, definitely. I was, I was, I was gonna say. I guess we we do have a car. Like uh, my wife has a car and drives the kids around. I like to tell people I don't have a car because I, I, it's her car. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. how I get off going on about cars all the time without sounding like a, a hypocrite. But um, with two kids who are in all these special programs that are all over the city, and you know, a typical American city that's not at all designed for um, like friendliness for non-car people, you really get stuck really fast, and you can't mm-hmm. go to these special programs and stuff. So. Um, we do because we have the car though. I mean, we, we've kind of, we make little outings every now and then and kind of see the stuff around the city. So it has worked for us in that way. Um, but yeah, I liked speaking to being a, a workaholic and stuff. I don't, I wouldn't quite call myself. A, depends on the era of my life, I guess. But anyway, yeah. when I, when I first joined the company I'm working at now, I, I used to just like, I'd come home at like nine thirty or eight thirty, like fairly often. Mm-hmm. And so I'd be in the office all day and I would, leave and go to work before the kids woke up and I would come home after their sleep. Not every single day, but like mm-hmm. that would happen. And it, it was really weird. Like I'd walk in and see them sleeping and it's like, Oh, these are my kids. This is nice, but they didn't see me. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's, it was depressing. And so like one thing about the pandemic, I guess, I mean, the kids love to just constantly interrupt, but I see them <laughs> all the time. And I, I imagine you get that a little bit too. Like just imagine being that kind of that workaholic and having all these things where you're out of the house. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that would work with your family dynamic, with your wife working and stuff too, but like you can envision a world where you see your kid way less, right? Yeah. Oh and man, the pandemic, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm worn down, man. Like, <laughs> it's the uh, opposite for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, looking at it last summer, the, the way the coronavirus was, we were looking at the numbers and we're like, our, our kid, was he's young enough that we didn't legally have to send him to school. Like he, he was kindergarten age and we're like, you know what? these numbers are going to go up. Virus is going to go rampant. Why are we sending our kid to, to school? Like, it, let's just keep him home this year. Yeah, man, I'm worn down. <laughs> <laughs> life, yeah. life is not meant for uh, working at home full time with a with a hyperactive child. And it's, yeah. it's weird. It's like the numbers are kind of the same. Like you'd think that I'd look at the numbers and I'd be like, okay, well, I guess I got to do whatever I can to homeschool him and keep him out again this year. But, but I'm looking at him like, man, I can't wait for him to go to school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I guess, I guess I kind of understand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's also like a lot of fatigue with the, the virus as a whole. Like it's, it's hard to continue yeah. to take it seriously, even if the numbers are just as bad. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I guess I've, I lived through that era of like barely ever seeing the kids. And so it's, yeah. it was kind of nice. Uh, like I, I'm so afraid to go back to that. I can yeah. take the fatigue a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I've, I've always tried to, to um, play an active role. Like I, I get that there's a lot of parents out there that don't, but um, I, I, we've, we've got an only child and he does not play by himself very frequently. Wow. Yeah. That would be a lot of work. Yeah, it's not like we, uh, I guess, like sit our child in a room and let them let let them <laughs> just sit there alone. Like we play with them, but then they also play with each other, and then they have yeah. programs and stuff. So it feels like across the course of a day, there's a lot of different uh, times we're interacting directly and times we're not really interacting directly. And so I feel like once school gets started, of course, it's going to be more back 
like I'll see them less, but even in the meantime, um, I don't know. It's I I haven't it it hasn't quite hit me as like this enormous burden, mm. but maybe we've just kind of balanced things a little better than some people, or or had the resources to balance things better. I guess. Mm. Yep. Well, I don't know that we uh, necessarily had any sort of a, a, a point to this podcast. It's gonna it's gonna be hard throwing a title on it. Complaining, uh, but uh, we should we should probably wrap it up pretty soon here. Yeah. Well, I gotta go. Actually, I have some uh, stuff brewing. So okay. So kids crawling on me as we speak. Right. So uh, I, I do you have time to answer whether or not you've been playing any games? Let's see. I have four minutes. Um, I, well, it's a quick answer. Not really. <laughs> I've been playing Mario Galaxy 2 with the kids. We are now at the at Koopa's Castle, so I expect I will finish that this weekend. And I'm going to be in that exciting place where I guess I, I can uh, choose a new game to play with them. So, nice. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I haven't had time to play anything for myself this week, but uh, I have been playing uh, Downtown Special Kunio Kun's Historical Period Drama. <laughs> love that title <laughs> i mean i've played that game like over the past 20 years or so um so i'm i'm it's kind of in a way super nostalgic and, and dear to me but at the same time it's uh it's it's my know. first time playing and it's it's fun having a, a seven year, a six year old to play with so it's it's fun playing what? a two player um yeah I, i'm kids are starting to enroach into my life here so. <laughs> <laughs> um enjoy that that i think that is a, overall a fun game so, yep. Yeah. Fun series. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll let you escape. <laughs> Rock on. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, good chatting. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>